Hey everybody, Jazzy here. This is my beginner's guide to your first autumn in Don't Starve Together. I've made a few Ruins Rush guides, but a new player to the game is gonna wanna focus more on just surviving and preparing for their first winter. So I'm gonna walk you step by step through your first season in the game, what to gather and how to protect yourself. This guide assumes you're doing a solo run, and if you're playing on a community server, I'd be a little more considerate about world resources and maybe not smash down every pig house I see. I'll be using Wilson in this playthrough because he has no real downsides, and also grows a beard that helps out with freezing in winter. He also gets extra hunger from bacon and eggs, which is fairly easy to make. Lastly, I like that he doesn't have any real combat advantages, so you still need to kite mobs, which is a very important skill to develop. So for those reasons, I would definitely recommend him to a beginner, but you might find the advantages of other characters more alluring, so the choice is up to you. I'm creating a survival world with all default settings, so wildfires will still be an issue in summer. Feel free to customize the world any way you want, and don't let anyone tell you how the game should be played. Now, to immediately contradict myself, I would highly recommend turning lag compensation to none in your settings. This feature basically lets you pretend that you have no lag, but as a result, does not show you the true location of your character. So you end up getting hit by mobs even if your character is visibly out of range, and it's just not helpful when you're trying to learn how to dodge attacks. Better to just get acclimated to the slight input delay and learn to enter commands a little bit earlier than you need them done. But without further ado, let's get started on survival in the constant. Day one, you will pop out of the portal into a starter biome. Your first goal is to grab twigs and grass. If you can get 20 of each on day one, that'll be a good start. Generally speaking, it's hard to take too many. You're also going to want at least two flint for making your first pickaxe. Once you mine your first boulder, you'll have more flint for making other tools. Also, feel free to pick carrots and berries around here. They are a good food source for your first autumn and can be found all over the world. You could also grab some butterfly wings for healing. I like to use the left mouse button to kind of lead the butterfly and then control F when I'm on top of it. Butterfly wings restore 8 HP and are one of the best early healing foods. Now your next objective is to find gold so you can make a science machine. There's an area called the mosaic biome which almost always generates close to the portal. So scan the area and when you start seeing random patches of barren ground and gray rocky turf, you're in the mosaic. Search for these boulders with gold veins. Craft your first pickaxe and mine the boulder and as soon as you get the extra extra flint, you can craft an axe. Mine a few of these gold boulders because you're gonna want rocks as well. I'd say if you go through two pickaxes, you'll have a good amount of minerals to start with. The only other thing we need for our science machine is tree meat. Equip your axe and start chopping that wood. With four logs, we can do the science. These crafting stations unlock new item recipes, and once you prototype something, you can craft it any time, no station needed. But for now, let's place our science machine down. The first thing you want to craft is a backpack, which takes up your body slot and adds eight extra inventory spaces. And before we go into a crafting frenzy, make sure that you keep two twigs and two grass in your inventory for a torch. Otherwise, Otherwise, this will become an unseated any percent death speed run once night falls. Okay, back at the station, let's prototype a shovel, which can be used to dig up tree stumps and other useful things. Next, prototype rope from the refine tab. And now you can make a spear, which will be your first dedicated weapon. I say dedicated because your axe will also make for a decent weapon and is totally sufficient until you get a hand bat. But you're gonna want to eventually prototype a spear, so you might as well do it now. Okay, time to make your torch and equip it. If you're ever in darkness, you will be attacked by Charlie, so always make sure to have a light source in your inventory. Ideally, two, in case one runs out. Unless you have meat to cook, I wouldn't build a campfire. Just keep a torch on you so you can stay on the move at night. Now, with two more rope and eight logs, you can make your first piece of armor, the log suit. For starter armor, this is a really good piece of equipment. Armor is pretty important in Don't Starve, and you should always equip some before fighting. Mobs hit hard, and armor reduces uses a lot of damage. In my experience, the majority of combat deaths occur when players are not wearing any. The last thing you want to craft is a hammer. This will let you destroy structures, and with it, you can reclaim half of the materials from your science machine. You can then craft your next science machine and keep it pre-built in your inventory for next time. Now here's something that I really wish I knew when I started playing. 
If you click build on a structure in your crafting tab, you spend the materials from your inventory and get the placer on your tooltip. If you right click to cancel placing, then it will stay pre-built in your crafting menu and you can place it anytime you want. So in general, you want as many structures pre-built as possible as it frees up tons of space. You can basically treat your crafting menu as an extension of your inventory. Okay, now it's time to start exploring. One of the most important goals in First Autumn is to map out as much of the world as possible and learn the location of different resources. I like to do this by walking all the way around the edge of the map. This will just ensure that you don't miss any biome that might not be connected via roads. If you find a touchstone, you can use your hammer to break the surrounding pig heads for some quick pig skin and twigs. And if you die, you can float to one of these for a one-time resurrection. By the way, if you spot this gigantic beehive, you can totally hammer it until there's no more honey dripping out of the top hole. It's a super easy way of getting a few quick bits of honey. Just don't hammer it anymore after that unless you want to get boosted by a giant bee. Try to pop open sinkholes that you encounter, even just to take a look around downstairs. It'll give you a feel for the layout of the caves for when it's time to go looking for the ruins. You should also grab some light bulbs down here so that you can make a lantern at your first alchemy engine. Another good early game healing source is cooked battlisk wings. Bats will spawn out of sinkholes that you open up, so just throw on some armor and hit them twice with your spear. Cooked wings give 8 HP, so you can think of them as ugly butterfly wings. Feel free to check suspicious tracks in the early days of the game. The chances of a Varg or Yukis are very low at the start, and Koala are great sources of meat. Once you find one, you can either trap it on the edge of land or wait for it to fall asleep at night and then get that first hit in. Once you hit it, it will aggro onto you, at which point you can start to kite it. Dodge its attack, hit six times, then dodge again. You will get a lot of meat, so try to cook it right away so that it lasts longer, but be sure to save two raw meat for a ham bat. As you encounter spider dens, try to take down a few of them early on. Over time, they will upgrade and can easily overrun parts of the world with spiders. Now, fighting spiders is pretty straightforward. They can be stun locked, so if there's one, just keep swinging until they die. It can get tricky in larger numbers, so try not to get more than three attacking you at once. Silk is an important crafting ingredient, so you should start to stock up on it now. Now this part is optional. If you want to get a head start on nightmare fuel, you can totally go for it in the early days by snacking on some green mushrooms. You will want to eventually get comfortable with being insane and fighting shadow creatures, because nightmare fuel is one of the most valuable resources. Early game is a good time to go insane, because you don't have to deal with lots of other threats simultaneously. You don't need to be constantly insane, but if you can manage to get 9 nightmare fuel before the full moon on day 11, you can upgrade Chester and expand your inventory space. Now, if you have lag compensation turned off, sometimes you can sneak in a hit with shadow creatures before they bite, then strike again after they bite. You don't have to, but it definitely moves things along and kills the shadows a lot faster. Also, keep swinging when they disappear, because if they reappear on top of you, then you can get another free hit in before they have a chance to attack. If you pass through a desert, definitely take the time to open some tumbleweeds. You can quickly get a lot of twigs and grass. Plus, they have a good chance of dropping gears, which are not super plentiful on the surface. You can also get trinkets for the Pig King. Now, I like to wait to make my first alchemy engine until I have some pig skin and light bulbs, but you can make it as soon as you get enough wood, gold, and rocks. At a science machine, you want to prototype cut stone, doodads, and boards. You'll need all three ingredients to prototype an alchemy engine. This will unlock most of the non-boss science items in the game. Now, the first thing I'll make here is a football helmet. It's basically a log suit for your head and will dramatically increase your survival odds because you can be protected all the time without taking off your backpack so any surprise attacks won't bite into your health nearly as much. Then you want to prototype a hambat. This weapon will see you well through the late game. It has unlimited uses and slowly loses power over time. Dark Swords are stronger, but they have limited uses and are more expensive, so unless I really need to maximize my damage output, the Hambat will be my primary weapon for the vast majority of the game. If you grab light bulbs, be sure to craft a lantern. As a light source, it is a considerable upgrade from a torch that could be carried, it could be placed on the ground, and refueled with light bulbs. If you want a miner hat, then you'll want to craft a net, which will allow you to catch fireflies. You can make a net at a science machine, but you'll need alchemy to craft the hat. Now you can hammer your alchemy engine and get moving again. 
Just be aware that until you pre-craft the next one, those materials are going to take up three inventory slots. So if possible, try to have the materials to pre-build your next engine so that you can free up that space. Pigs are a good source of meat and pig skin, and kiting them is fairly straightforward. Hit them once, dodge their punch, and then you can hit them up to four times before their next attack. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can completely stun lock them and just keep swinging until they're dead. Pig houses are a very good early game resource because they can be hammered for boards, cut stone, and pig skin. You can use these materials to build alchemy engines as you explore the map, and the pig skins can be used for handbats and helmets. Then later on, you can use the materials for building. I wouldn't worry too much about destroying these because before winter hits, we're gonna rebuild some of the pig houses in a much more convenient location for farming. A pig house in the middle of a savanna or forest is not gonna do you much good. Fireflies come out at night, and you can catch them with a bug net. You only need one along with a straw hat and gold to make your first miner hat. This will keep your hand slot free, so it's much easier to fight and work at night. As long as you got an alchemy engine down, you can craft up a top hat from 6 silk. This will provide a nominal sanity boost, plus you'll need one eventually for a Presta Hatitator. I love my Chester plushie, but I already regret picking this skin. You can always prototype stuff for instant sanity gain, and there are plenty of structures such as lightning rods that you will eventually want. So might as well prototype as much as you can in the early days. In the Oasis Desert, you will likely come across some Volt Goat Herds. This is a great source of large meat at every stage of the game. As long as you leave one goat alive, the herd will slowly repopulate with goats, so feel free to kill a few off if you're in need of meat. They'll run away from you, but like the koalas, you can just wait until night for them to fall asleep. And then you can get in five hits before they wake up and attack. After that, you can sneak in two hits between headbutts. Each goat drops two large meat and the occasional horn that can be used to make a morning star, which is a very nice weapon to have in spring. Well, we are only on day seven, so this is going to be a multi-part series. I guess I talk a lot, but hopefully the info is useful. So next time we'll finish up autumn and get ready for winter. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what questions you have and see you next time.